are these people? Rockfin, the story goes. We've had a problem with Rockfin the last couple of months. I'm sure y'all have heard that we have been unable to stream to our Rockfin channel slash INN for the last few months. We can upload a video and publish there, but whenever we go live, it doesn't work. And a couple of weeks ago, I started just hearing around that they had some issues with the money and with the Ray tokens that they distribute at the end of the month. And I started yeah. getting a little kind of agitated. Like, you know, I think it's time I write up an article about some of the things that have kind of bothered me about Rockfin. And there's some technical hurdles. There's the crypto angle. And now that they're having trouble apparently paying out their creators, what's going on here? So I decided to write, I was going to write one article. And then the more I looked at it, I was like, you know, it's really, while they are related topics, to put it in one mega long article, nobody will read it. So I'm going to break it up and I'm going to put it into three articles and link it where the first one talks about is there financial trouble? Is there trouble in the state of Denmark? And link to the other articles. So we've been using Rockfin. I said the past several years, we've seen YouTube, the dominant video platform, censor and demonetize creators who are critical of the U.S. government's policies on COVID. Safe and effective. Safe and effective. My heart swells with pride when I think very, about the shots. All right. Very safe. Very safe. January 6th. It was... It was, it, was not, it was not an insurrection. It was a riot. Um, I'm surprised President Trump incited an erection, we know, according to Cam Cam, that uh, yep. ele election integrity, because our, our ballots are completely secure and there's nothing, no, no domestic influence in our, in our elections. Um, then there also are, of course, is you, they don't like you talking about how Ukraine might be losing or Russia might be winning. Or that Israel is another fucking war. <laughs> yeah. Or that Israel is murdering Palestinians indiscriminately daily, and a host of other topics, of course. That sent those censored and mm. demonetized creators looking for alternative places to live stream and build an audience. One of the safe yep. havens that served as an ad-free home for the censored and controversial has been Rockfin, a video platform to cater specifically to a couple of niches. Amateur wrestling, which is okay, and the censored free thinkers. Now, the reason why it was started for amateur wrestling was one of the founders, Martin Floriani, was into amateur wrestling. Wrestling. So he wanted to create Not a platform to wrestling. support that. Yes. Actual, like, Greco-Roman style wrestling. Well, or folk style, or, you know, catch as catch can, or... So, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> So the first red flag that happened to me, you know, that, that started to peak, what's going on here that something may be going on is that there were no payments to creators for August 2024 paid out on time. Now, they have since subsequently paid out most creators, in, except for one notable that I can think of, and that would be me. Um, at least I show no record of it, and I've asked them for it multiple times, and nobody's responded. However, what I'm saying is, no, okay, alternative video platform Rockfin has not paid out its creators in Ray tokens since the end of August, and this was written on the 12th of September, an alarming sign to say the least. I've spoken with over a dozen creators, and none have indicated that they've been paid since August 23rd. Now, some of them said that they only usually get paid at the beginning of the month for all their stuff because they leave it all um, not premium. And they, uh, I'll explain that in a little bit, too. And um, by the way, these articles are available on IndieMediaToday.com. And this is still just snippets. I didn't clip the whole thing because there's even more there. And it goes into a lot of the technical stuff that I didn't think that anybody really wanted to see in the weeds. You're free to go there yourself and look at it. All the links will be in the description after the, after the show. Rockfin advised late on September 12th when I emailed them to ask about this that, quote, yes, you're correct that none of the money had gone out. The mints and tips haven't been sent out yet, but they'll be processed in the next few days. We're currently in the process of streamlining this responsibility to ensure Which, more efficient handling going forward. Like you'd think 
you'd think when it's about people's fucking money, like that you would be like, okay, you're not going to get paid this month because yada, yada, yada. We'll have it back up at approximately yada, yada, but we'll keep you in touch, right? Like any of that would be a normal thing to do, but right. you know, maybe it's just me. All right. Now, um, even even granted, if they took till the third to pay out on the twelfth, I emailed them and they just kind of acknowledged it without much more than that. As of two o'clock on the sixteenth, <laughs> no payments had been received, and within hours of publishing this article, what do you know? The money started popping through. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. Yeah, that's right. We're sorry. We're sorry. Right? We're so sorry. <laughs> but my question is, number one, why wasn't any communication sent out to Rockman creators about the delay in payout since the first with an explanation? If they knew about it and it took me sending them an email to respond, they could have communicated that to everyone. Number two, I just noticed that the monthly statement emails that we were getting notifying how much the channel earned in tips and viewing time stopped coming in January. Huh, how about that? And then Rockfin also has provided no explanation about the hold up, hold up in distributing the value of money that was contributed by viewers and for live stream viewing earned in fiat currency and available to Rockfin immediately as far back as August 1st. Remember, because they pay out for the whole month after the month is over in Ray tokens. <laughs> they don't even pay out in the dollars that they collected. So they're literally sitting on all of this cash, U.S. dollar fiat cash, and giving away Monopoly money in return. That has the equivalent value of a dollar ten. <laughs> that's right now worth ninety-one cents and dropping. Yeah. So, like I said, I've heard from multiple creators as of two o'clock on the seventeenth, twenty-four hours later, that they received their Ray tokens into their wallet beginning last night. With no further explanation from Rockfin beyond the one we received below, and my channel still has not yet been paid out. Now, here's red flag number two. According to what I saw, and I could be wrong, when I sent an email to the people that I deal with at Rockfin, including Scott, who was in charge of their crypto, he's a vice president of operations. I got an auto reply email that said basically for billing payments and admin goes to Matt and for contracts and partners, talk to Martin and general questions support. That tells me that you've got two senior executives left. Now, former VP of product, Jaime Brugueras, we know he's no longer there and I'm unsure about Scott or marketing guru, Nicholas Veliquet, whether they still work there. Now, Nico house told me that he got an email from Nicholas weeks ago so i don't know if he's been released in the last two weeks or not um i would like further clarification on that as well who's still there my question is is could they be shutting setting up to shut down or sell like what the hell the reduction of headcount the lack of development on the tech side and their lack of communication and engagement with their creators in 2024 all indicate that there could be financial difficulties at rockfit there's also something happening with a lawsuit, but I don't know if it involves Rockfin or not. It certainly has occupied some of Martin's time and headspace. I will yeah. concede the platform has been stable and working okay for the most part, but no new development or fixes have been deployed in ages. I think Bytes was the last thing they put out. That was a year ago. I also yeah. noticed I also noticed that Rockfin has been buying Facebook and Instagram ads vertically featuring their creators in vertical TikTok-style videos, pushing those bytes to generate more traffic to the platform, but they don't really link to the right place, and they don't really go to that video, and the video doesn't go to the full video that it, that it was clipped from. The whole thing works clunky. I said it would be interesting to learn the total in tips plus monthly subscription revenue for 2024 versus their expenses. Are they making money? Are they losing money? Typically, when we see behavior like this, it is not the indication of healthy growing platform pushing to grow revenue and viewers. So I don't know, but I can read between the lines. 
You know, I got eyes and I got ears. And it's sad. Mm. Because there's a lot to this story. Because So I've written these two companion pieces to try to help explain what's happened and what I've observed. Because basically it comes down to a failure to scale and develop the user interface on the tech side all right, and address any real tech challenges, while the crypto side has caused nothing but headaches and stress for the creators, all without the viewers clearly aware that the money they tip is given to the creator uh, to the, that they support in crypto tokens, and that Rockfin first takes a cut. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to stop there for a second and ask you again, everyone, to support us and to, if you can, hook us up. These amazing people, a lot of whom are in the chat right now, uh, have done so. Anna Mares was hooking us up on Rockfin and has paid $100 since April. Okay, just there, not non there since there. Since she's, she's incredible. We love you, Anna. All right. The one thing is we support an ad-free platform. I want to be on Rockfin. But if they're not going to pay me or they're going to mess around with the Ray token and make it difficult to cash out and get my money out, well, it's certainly not worth it then, is it? What do we mean? So let's talk about, nope. the, te let's talk about the technical stuff. And Reef knows a lot about this part because Reef has been as involved in working the INN and Indie Left Media channels since we got them. Reef's been helping and setting up streams and dealing with this crap since day one. And nobody likes setting up a stream in Rockfit. Everybody, it's a headache, right? So my point is, is that the crypto-based alternative platform, it, it appears to be in trouble. They haven't fixed INN's live streaming issue for months with no time frame to resolution. And that's just crazy, right? Yeah. I go a little bit back down memory lane. Initially in 2020, it was Richard Medhurst, my brother, the Convo Couch, shout out to Fee and Pasta. All right. Um, yeah. Fee. Yes. And Nico House, Indie Media Award honorees all. All right. And several others that introduced me to watching live streams. And I didn't hear that, by the way. What? And I thought you played that sound, but upload. Okay. So nope. those. Folks, introduced me to watching live streams and uploaded videos on Rockfin as a YouTube alternative. I actually preferred it in a while, in a way. Being ad-free and the lack of censorship about the topics listed above was the best part for me, as well as the community of chatters, people like Anna Mayers and Dave Burt over there and um, Laura Baza and Denver Attaway. And I'm going to shout out our Rockfin audience, Jeff Thomas Black, everyone that's been over there that I, I love them and I, I appreciate them being dedicated to a free speech platform. All right. The platform. Well, and I think Go ahead. just to get this out of my head before you continue, like, Please. I, I, cause I've been racking my brain about it. Me and you've had conversations about it. I still haven't fully gotten it together, you know, but I feel like this whole alternative platform thing while great in theory, the issue is, is that you can't copy over the wealth of content that YouTube has, which is why people are there and why people check it every day and they look at their subscriptions feed and, you know, they're plugged into that ecosystem. Like, you know, unless you're going for a particular niche on another platform, that content isn't there for you. So you're still conjoined at the hip for it. So it's frustrating because I wish there was something different, but at the same time, I don't think we should give up on like fighting YouTube to be better, you know? Yeah. Well, meanwhile, so, YouTube is and, kicking off channels like right. red and Africa stream yep. at, the, at the insistence of the federal I government. Know. A uh, hotspot allegedly that same thing the last couple of days. I don't know if everybody's heard, but yeah. they also got kicked off of Meta and like it, and YouTube. I just feel like it's always like a you know free market capitalist solution to a problem that should be easy to deal with if things weren't completely fucked. 
You right, know? but it's not free market. We have a like, monopoly. There's a monopoly. I know. So how do you deal with the yeah. monopoly? All right. Right. Um, I love it when Sean does that. Sean has the ability to put an INN logo on Kick because Kick lets you do custom emoji. Very cool. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, it's it's frustrating because, and I, I hear you about alternate platforms, but we cannot. We yeah, have I mean, to I'm be. just. My alternate platform to me is coming to a like, Substack near you. They're not trying to censor you. I can get to a hundred percent of my subscribers without having to deal with a gateway or a filter or a news feed or anything else. I can put our message directly into their inbox every time. That's why I'm such an advocate for the newsletter. But I was excited in 2021 as Rockfin grew substantially, adding more creators like Jimmy Dore and Whitney Webb, the two I was most excited about joining. Then they added even more comedian podcasters like Eddie Bravo and Sam Tripoli and other big names. Uh, Brian Callen, I know, mm -hmm. also is over there. When I started a live yep. stream uh, for How Do We Miss That, when we started this show three years ago, it was one of my goals to get approved for a Rockfin account because Rockfin was almost like a gate like a gatekeeper they don't want just everybody they don't give everybody a channel so you kind of have to be referred it was very opaque as to how you even get a channel really it took a referral from one of the existing creators on the platform to punch someone over there and be like hey give these guys a channel already and thankfully somebody did that for me and i did that for several others as well over the next few months you know marcus cage very famously shout out to to marcus friend of the show when, we first, when I first got the channel, he said, all right, now you got this channel. What are you going to do with it? I was like, you know, mostly I was just thinking about live streaming. How do we miss that? But then after thinking about it, I can use it as a platform to give other creators who weren't yet on Rockfin the ability to put their videos up there through my channel. And we did that over the next several months. I empowered other streamers who didn't have a channel yet to simulcast, give them exposure on the platform. More than half a dozen of those creators now have their own Rockman channels. And one of them now co-streams his stuff to AM Wake Up every, every Friday, the independent review. INN, yep. of course, was one of those referrals and was approved for a channel in June of 2022. And that had been our primary channel for the following two years. And all of our live streams, when we remembered to and didn't have to jump through those unnecessary hoops and didn't and remember to hit the button or whatever... Everything was going to Rockfin, at least the live streams. For a while, I was uploading clips there, but the traffic wasn't there. So I stopped uploading clips and it basically became a live streaming receptacle, ad free and sensor free. And we don't gateway, gateway or pay well our stuff there. I said, I've been an advocate for Rockfin, but I seem to be fighting a losing battle in finding and working to drive an audience there to compete with the viewer counts, YouTube, or even Rumble. Right? These are just some of the tech problems that I've personally experienced. And I know of firsthand of other creators and viewers who have cl complained about these regularly. And there's a lot more than beyond what I'm about to talk about. All right. But the view counts are a big thing. Look, why are we doing this? And we're not just doing this for view counts. But man, is it frustrating to work a half an hour to clip up a live stream and publish a clip or three or four or five views, which is literally what some of these videos were getting when I put them out on Rockfin. Part yeah. of it, part of it is the way that, Mar that Rockfin marketed themselves early on that drove people away and pushed them away. And we're going to talk about that. And there's a lot of reasons why I feel like that is, but it's frustrating. And I just stopped doing it. I I'm pushing to YouTube, push them to, I'll, I'll loop them on Rockfin and Rumble, and it's pretty easy to do that. But like I said, in mid-June of this year, we began receiving an error message whenever we started streaming live to the INN account. It would seem like it was working on our side, but then the viewer would see an error message that the video couldn't be shown, some of whom didn't go to another platform to watch, unfortunately, and we just lost those people from watching the, the show. This is, of course, what it looked like. Yeah. Anna is quite familiar, of course, because she kept messaging me like, what the hell? I'm trying to watch this, and it's telling me that your stream's not working. Oh, come on, man. This is It says it's working on our side, and this was the frustration we had to deal with. 
we reached out to support, and I had a great call on June 26th with Matt, who is the VP. He's not a VP. He's actually just head of support. <clears throat> he was able to replicate the problem on his side and said that the engineers would work on a fix. I also then pointed out an error with the channel slider at the top. There's this ribbon on the on the thing that tells you when channels are live, which he said he would also show engineering, but that might and probably would take longer to fix. Okay, fine. But it hasn't updated. Like I, I updated the channel icon. It didn't update the channel icon for months. That slider is just stuck in yeah. perpetuity. As of September 12th, when I published this article, the channel is still unable to live stream, and it's still to this day, 10 days later, is unable to live stream. We've had minimal communication from Rockfin and have heard from nobody besides Matt. Luckily, we have the IND Left News channel as a backup, which we've been using for INN since the end of June. Our audience has contributed over $100 in tips since then, mostly which would have gone to the other INN channel. And Rockfin hasn't paid out on any of it since actually goes back beyond August 23rd. I don't show any record of getting paid out past April 1st. Something yeah. is rotten in the state of Denmark. Then we also have that, and this is a big complaint from a lot of live streamers, right, is that their web-based streaming platform, they don't integrate with StreamYard or Restream in order to integrate live chat. So I use a, a service called OBS, so I can actually put live chats up on screen like this, but and, and also integrate yeah. with Rockfin. <clears throat> Nobody else does this. They're all unable to put Rockfins up on screen. Stabby does it by doing a window capture that Eric produces. She's the only one I know that does that. Reef has a way to kind of Mickey it and show it if he really wants to, but they never integrated with those streaming yeah. platforms. So it wasn't easy to show when somebody contributed to your channel and put that up on screen and thank them publicly for it. Same thing with, um, you know, cheese slice over at, at the convo couch channel and, and pasta to go. He'll copy it from Rockfin and paste it on YouTube so he could put it up on as a YouTube thing, but it's not really from YouTube. The reason why they didn't yeah. do that, allegedly, according to uh, what I heard, is that Restream and StreamYard want $15,000 a month to integrate your platform into theirs as a one-click right. integration. StreamYard kind of integrates with Rumble, but not totally. Restream doesn't at all. And we use Restream. So creators can only see the donations through the Rockfin creator panel. They have to use that chat because not only do they have to use that chat, they actually have to be logged into the creator panel just to go live. All right. And you click on this little red button. As soon as I turn on the, so the streaming software, they don't have a streaming software of their own, no web-based platform. And then in their dashboard, you have to click a special button when you're live and it sees it in order to be able to go live. Again, a lot of technical stuff. I know I'm sorry. This is kind of, Geeky platformy stuff, but it also is important because this matters to all of the people that you watch. All of them mostly are on Rock, Rockfin and have been dealing with this nonsense. On the side, Rackfin. occupying Rockfin, occupying a a percentage of the space of their their time and their um uh, attention that could be used elsewhere, and it's not working well. Now, not only has there been a technical, a lot of technical stuff that have been rough, they also have had trouble with their crypto. And I've had trouble with their crypto. Um, Golden Monarch, shout out to Golden Monarch, has been writing about what a Ponzi scheme crypto is and explaining different reasons behind it. Initially, I thought Rockfin had a pretty blockchain. good idea. It's blockchain, it's cryptocurrency, as we know from the smartest live streamer in the business, Graham Elwood. <laughs> um, yeah. So Rockfin very intelligently decided that they were going to break away from the fiat monetary system. Did you fucking say to me, who fucking said this shit in the fucking chat? What fucking idiot said something stupid in the chat? I don't know who did that. Uh, what? Yeah. So... The initial thought was, hey, 
It's like a stock almost. I'm going to get paid in, co in company stock and the stock keeps going up. That means the more that the stock goes up, the more my stuff is worth. I'm going to hold on to these tokens because it's just going to keep going up. I believe in this platform. They keep adding more people. They're getting more people to their, to, to see it there. That's just going to keep going up in value. And if they keep paying me in tokens, well, then when I cash out, I'm going to make a bunch of money, right? Well, that's, that's, that's kind of more like where it went. So, so I was always unsure of the crypto element. Well, tokenizing videos? Okay. But I wasn't really looking too closely at that early on. I thought the idea could possibly have merit. I believed in what the company was doing with the platform as an ad-free alternative to YouTube. And I saw the Ray token, which, is, which stands for Receive Access Ecosystem. Talk about generic what? What? But I, yeah. But I saw the Ray token as a very small investment, potentially. Like I said, if the Ray token kept going up and we had a bunch of Ray tokens, that can help fund this channel, put profits back into growing it. It's all it. about geometry. You know? At one point in early 22, I actually bought out all the Ray tokens from one creator who shall remain nameless. Um, and everybody makes fun of now. But they didn't want to deal with the Ray tokens. They're on Rockfin. So I'm like, I'll buy them. I believe in this thing. And I get mm. it. And I use it. It is Gavin's special living wish to be roasted by his favorite comedians. Creators are get, having challenges just in getting paid out. All right. But they do get paid out. And the way Rockfin works, just like kind of like with, with YouTube, you, but you get super chats, just like you get YouTube super chats. They have super raise. You get, that's a tip contributed. You also get, if your video is premium, you get for any time that people viewed your content, you get paid on. And then whenever you have a premium subscriber to your channel, anything they watch while they're logged in on the platform, you get a little payout in Ray tokens for. So there's three different ways to earn Ray tokens through Rockfit. However, they made a change last year that your video has to be premium in order to get paid for the second one for viewing. And we don't make any of our videos premium. So basically now the only way that we get money from Rockfin is by tips directly that somebody gives to Rockfin in dollars that they then pay us in Monopoly money or Ray tokens. Show me the money! They're, they're seeing the money, but we're not. Um, Rockfin's business model is different. A monthly premium user subscription of $14.99 per month, which they raised, by the way, this year from $9.99. It unlocks all the premium mm. content on the platform for all creators. <laughs> so to me, this is kind of like the medium business model, where you pay a monthly fee and you yeah. unlock everything. One monthly fee. Now, and they used to give you... Go ahead. They used, to, they used to pay you out. I don't know if you have this in the article. I think you do. Like they used to pay you out per video, right? On, so like on you every put a video, video up, you'd get a payout. Video. Yep. On every video. Then like I think it was last year, I mentioned sometime this. last year, mm -hmm. they quietly like while you were making streams, it suddenly if you select the free version instead of the premium version of a video, it's like, well, now you're only gonna get money through tips. So to make money for the video, you have to make it premium. And it's like, well, that's not what I signed up for, you and know? In, and now RBN, like, has made almost, RBN has made almost all of their content on Rockfin premium paywalled. Um, premium, because that's, that's what it is by default, is premium. So, I don't know if they even are aware, right. So that's know, one of the things. If you don't change that. Right, if you don't go to the options within the, uh, within mm -hmm. the stream that you're making, you don't even realize that it's being made as premium. But I think they know, and that's their choice to make it premium so they can earn some money on the content because it's ad free. Look, everywhere else you watch ad free yeah. content. If you want it ad free, they've got to pay 15 or $21 a month to YouTube or, 50, or 10 bucks a month to, to rumble, to remove the ads, to watch ad free. It's 15 to watch on the entire rock. Yes, that one. Um, yeah. So, 
premium content, like I said, can only be viewed by premium subscribers of any channel on the platform. Each creator decides which, if any, of theirs is paywalled as premium. So basically, if you don't have a premium subscription to Rockfin, you can't see any RBN videos on, on Rockfin. You can see all of our videos for free. By default, each live stream and video uploaded is set as premium, and the creator must manually change it to free when creating their title and description and uploading their thumbnail if they want to bypass the premium paywall. While non pay yep. right, as while we non were saying. like I said, while non paywall content can be viewed by anyone, Rockfin has done a subpar job of communicating that publicly, because for a long time the platform required anyone who wanted to even view a video to register to the platform first. That's crazy. Thankfully, they changed that, but they lost a lot of people who got a bad first impression and vowed to never use it again. Also, a lot of times when you go, oh, there's like a pop-up window that, that says, hey, if you want to watch this, you should register, but you're not required to, and click here to continue, and then nobody does. In order to participate yeah. or in chat or leave a comment, you need to register free with an email address, set up a profile. That's fair. Right? Now, this is what I'm talking about. Fiat currency goes in, but Ray goes out to the creator. So where is all the cash going? To Rockfin. A hundred percent of the money is going to Rockfin. For unless whatever they have to spend to burn the token to issue to their creators every time they do. Viewers can and fans uh viewers can uh viewers and fans can leave a tip. I don't know why that that's weird. Can leave a tip in fiat currency using a credit card or, or after a live during or after a live stream, which Rockfin then pays the creator in their proprietary crypto ray token. After taking a 20% fee, 28% fee off the top, they advertise, oh, we don't take as much as YouTube, who takes 30. We take 28. <laughs> Thanks. Right. At the equivalent market value, they pay out at the equivalent market value of Ray. Now, at the time, the current price was around a dollar ten. The token, it's already down to ninety one cents. So it fluctuates. Now, we Pretty can talk highly, about. I imagine not really as highly as you'd think because they tried to pin their thing to a stable coin of Tether, and what it effectively did was cap the Ray token price at a dollar ten, according to Steve Poikinen. Now, here's yeah. my contention: is that Rockfin never really embraced widespread adoption of the Ray token to begin with, because if they did. I wouldn't be able to ask these pertinent questions. Number one, why couldn't creators with Ray, like me and my wallet, use that to tip other creators in Ray on the platform? If I wanted to tip JB Font or RBN or Sabby Sabs or Nico House or Richard Methurst or anyone in Ray tokens from my wallet, why couldn't I do that easily? Number two, how come Rockfin never made it easy for the general public to buy Ray tokens in advance and tip their creators directly in Ray? All right. And why didn't Rockfin spend any time educating their creators about the token? How it could be more widely used or easily converted? That's something else we're going to talk about next, which ensured the creators could transact more with it and gain more support for it. It's frustrating. Right, because this is what it requires in order to take a rate donation at the end of the month, once they actually paid it out in Ray, and get it into a bank account for usable cash that I could buy food with. In order to get paid out in currency that can be transacted, first had to get the, the rate tokens from Rockfin into a third party crypto wallet using like MetaMask or Coinbase wallet. They added MetaMask in 2020. Too. At first, it was Coinbase wallet you had to use. I then had to convert the Ray tokens into USDT, like I said, this is called Tether, or another crypto which can actually be transacted using a third party company called Uniswap. All right. It used to be a Kyber swap, and then they switched to Uniswap. So I have to use this third party that can transact between Ray tokens and USDT to exchange one for the other. And of course, there's a fee that goes along with that. Then I have to convert the USDT yep. back into US dollars and to fiat currency, which then can be transferred into my actual bank account. 
each step carries Whereas a fee. Right. On other platforms, go ahead. It's you just it just goes right into your PayPal. You know. And PayPal or equivalent. Right. Which also can be problematic. Again, I prefer yep. something like Absolutely. Something like even Cash App that can hook up to your bank account and deliver it within two or three days. Um yep. that's the easiest way to get to get us cash is Cash App. Kofi is pretty easy because it goes through PayPal. And I can use the money that's sitting in a PayPal account. It's kind of like a limbo between just, pushing it to my bank account and pay somebody else out from there. Like Zago Brothers, for send, example. Send gold to INN's P.O. Box at INNPOBox.POBox.com. Something like that. Um, I said, look, like I said, each step carries a fee each time you transact. To say nothing about the amount of time required, the hassle and aggravation and wondering, is this working? It's overly complicated and incredibly costly from a percentage standpoint to get our money out. More than half a dozen creators abandoned the platform over frustration with the crypto process, including people you like, like Primo Radical. Didn't want to deal with Rockfin. I believe Due Dissidence hasn't been on there in about eight months. Didn't want to deal with the crypto. Bottom line, getting Ray converted to U.S. dollars as usable or usable cash that we can buy groceries and pay our bills with too many steps too expensive too time consuming and rockfin has not done enough to make that process easier that's on them not on us we make videos it's on them to make sure we can get paid you want to be a platform in spite of these challenges a handful of independent creators have been loyal saw the ad free sensor free vision and stuck around we don't have a big channel there, nor do we make a lot off this platform. However, there are a lot of others who rely on it as a significant revenue stream contributing to their income, and they appeared to be getting the short end of the stick for Brockfin. A day later, our friend the Golden Monarch, who's sitting in chat, Russell's dealing with Bitcoin. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, I'll see. We can talk to him about that, but... Who would buy Rockfin and why is, is what Golden Monarch asked on Substack on Notes the other day. And I'm like, you know, I was going to answer him, but I decided to write a companion follow-up article the next day. Because there's a lot to why I think Rumble would be the right candidate to potentially buy out. If Rockfin were going to sell, and I don't know if they are or not, or if anybody has approached them, or if they're interested... But if there were going to be acquired, the most likely attractive uh, acquisition target, you know, the company, I see multiple reasons why Rumble could potentially want Rockpin. If they want them at all. Rumble! So the only logical players with the available cash to take out a competitor are Rumble and Alphabet. Alphabet owning YouTube. I think Alphabet would just buy it, shut it down, and make it disappear just to take out a competitor. I think Rumble might think about doing some interesting things with it. There's also a lot of overlap between the Rumble audience and the Rockfin audience and uh, the Rockfin uh, creators because you've got a lot of these um, people who've been kicked off of YouTube are going to Rumble. And a lot of those same people are on yeah. Rockfin. Um, all right. So that's also, again, these are all at IndieMediaToday.com. Like I said there, they appear to be getting the short end of the stick. If you are able to, please hook us up, drop a couple bucks, send a, buy us a coffee, send us some cash app. We have, I cashed out most of our Ray tokens. I have about a hundred or so dollars sitting at Rockfin right now in Ray tokens. Plus they owe me a hundred dollars worth of rate tokens and i'm waiting to hear back from them they have not answered me in a week as to why i haven't been paid but everybody else was and show me record of where you paid out how it was done and when and give me a statement for the entire year of when you paid me and they can't seem to where's respond where's the money to lebowski that. that's right where's the money lebowski is absolutely right golden monarch is saying now rumble is interested in advertisements and Bitcoin per conference. All right. Rumble be going rumbleless. Um, 
Well, they have a lot of Bitcoiners on their platform for sure. I think that they, um, I think they're embracing crypto for sure. Look, Trump coin, he just did a thing. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do and if they decide that they want to get into the, the tokenization, which is, again, just giving out company store money. If they need a cash raise, it's a good way, like Rockfin has been doing. They've been taking in all the cash without having to pay out any actual dollars. So does Rumble want to do that? You bet they do. They'd love to charge everybody's credit card and then not have to pay out in actual dollars. So I mean, worst thing comes to worst is that they just sell all the ray once they have a market share of it. And, you know take it as a loss yep you know now i went to like, the, the the ethereum's public chain at the current price the other day that i saw there's about four and a half million dollars of outstanding ray tokens um mm. for valuation's sake what that might be worth maybe if somebody had 20 million dollars and threw that at martin he might be willing to walk away i don't know I'm uh, I'm worried though. If you are able to, please hook us up, drop a couple bucks, send a buy us a coffee, send us some cash app. 